Hi everybody! It's Friday, which means it was my day to go to the office and do the things that are required for us to have worship in our parish this weekend and next week for Holy Week in our different places instead of being together. So that was good. And my licensed pastor, Randy Miller, came and he brought pizza and we were sitting in our good social distancing, eating our lunch, and a bat started flying around. So if you have to go to Black Creek this week, don't go in the gathering room. Uh, that's where Fred the bat is currently living, and he doesn't seem to want to come out of there. So we're just going to let him hang out until he decides it's time for him to go. So that was today's excitement, and that our friend Lella, uh, sent our food pantry a case of peanut butter that was safely delivered today so that we can help more and more people have enough food uh, in these dis days of distancing. And so that was a good thing for today, too. It's uh, Friday, and I've been thinking about a book that I read every night before I go to bed, honest to goodness. And uh, it's called The Bedtime Shema, a good night book. And it's a book about thinking about everything that's happened in the day and letting go and trusting as we go to sleep. And so I thought maybe as these days of preventative distancing and quarantine and new advice today about whether or not we should be wearing masks when we go out in public for our necessary groceries or uh, essential trips, I thought maybe we should have this book as a reminder that we, when we go to sleep, we trust in God's protection of us. So, The Bedtime Shema, adapted by Sarah Gershman, illustrations by Christina Swarner. In loving memory of Beth Samuels. So sometimes book dedications are for people who have passed away and we write the books or illustrate the books in their memory to honor them. So in loving memory of Beth Samuels. And here's the first picture. What have I done today? Did I hurt someone else? I ask for forgiveness. Did someone hurt me? I try to forgive. Thank you, God, for giving me eyes that close so I may rest. I hope my dreams are sweet tonight. My child, may you lay down gently to sleep, and may God's peace spread over you. May God, who watched over those who were here long ago, watch over you. May God bless you and keep you safe. May God give you light when it is dark. May God help you grow and be happy. It's time to sleep, but I am not alone. Wonder is at my right. Tomorrow will be filled with new adventures. Strength is at my left. 
When I sleep, my body grows stronger. Light is behind me. I am safe in the dark. Comfort is in front of me. I feel warm and sleepy. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Listen, Israel. God is our God. God is one. Baruch. Shem Kuvod Mahuto Leolam Vaed. How wonderful is God's world. I rest myself in God's hand. God is with me, and I am not afraid. The end. So some of the words in this story weren't in English, were they? They were in Hebrew, where this poem, this set of prayers for going to bed comes from. And so that's what those words were in, was Hebrew. And it's a book about a little kid and their parents um, helping them rest and go to sleep and know that they're in God's trust. But all of us are little kids. Some of us are just taller. And in these confusing days, we need to know that we rest in God's trust and care and that we are going to be okay in these days if we're confused or scared that we are surrounded by God's love and by people who love and care for us. And so I hope this Friday night you get some good sleep and you have comforting and wonderful dreams about fabulous things and that you have a good night and look forward to tomorrow and all the adventures that it will bring. I saw today a dandelion growing and those are the first sure sign of spring here, the first pollen for the bees as it warms up and it was a promise to me that we're going to make it through these days however long this social distancing preventative distancing time takes to flatten the curve of this virus. And so through it all, I want you to remember how incredibly, very, very, very much I love you. Bye-bye.